I'm up here in the Tennessee mountains and I came up here to help my brother paint a trailer that he had picked up that is not looking so good. So we're going to put a paint job on it that'll help to match some of the other uh, RVs that he has on the lot. So let's get started. What we're going to do is we're going to take this old trailer that he purchased to use as kind of a workshop and put some color scheme on it that's very similar to his motorhome. So, day one, they scrubbed down the entire trailer with the soap and water solution, and then my nephew Ryan came back and pressure washed the entire thing. He was a huge help during this, and I really want to thank him. Another part was the painstaking piece of removing the old vinyl from the camper. Even my sweet mama lent a hand. So my brother Joe literally scrubbed this down with a soap and water mixture. You could use like a car wash soap or even just a detergent and create a soapy water to scrub it down and then do a full rinse on it as well. You can also use, they used a pressure washer on it. If you don't have one, I think just a good scrubbing will definitely help. Now if you've really got some caked on or rust up, I'd recommend you go over it with like a uh, Scotch-Brite pad to remove any of that stuff or if it's overly glossy still, you really want to kill as much of the shine as possible. So as you can see, the sides of this are really oxidized out, had some stripes that they had to remove from it and we're going to take and mask out all the lights on it, anything that doesn't want to be painted and we're going to try to paint it in two tone colors. Joe got a little aggressive on removing the decals here so we're going to have to lay a coat of primer on this first so that the paint that we're applying is not applying directly to the raw aluminum. And we should probably be looking at using a zinc oxide for this but we'll probably just use some of the uh, Croylon uh, two times primer and paint in one to seal that up. I'm using this 3M safe release. The only disadvantage of this stuff is that it, it's hard to tear. I was gonna say, is it thicker? So, so you have to use either a knife or a pair of scissors to, to cut it. I mean, ah. it, it's, it's really, it works really well, especially if you're putting it on paint like what we're going to be doing. This is going to be a two-tone. So this will come off really easy without peeling the paint off. Now some of this looks like it's got some silicone around the edge of it. That may turn out to be an issue on this project. Have to kind of work with that and see what happens. Just don't miss, cowboy. We ran into a hornet's nest, literally. So we had to uh, take care of that little issue. And once again, Ryan was a huge help. Give me a heads up. <laughs> well, I was trying to get them before they. There they go. Look out. The next part is starting to mask out the larger things like the windows and the doors. Now this is nothing to scrimp on. You really want to take your time and make sure you do a thorough job. You know, you don't want paint sneaking in and you'll have to come clean it up again later. Even putting your paper down, you're going to want to make sure you run the tape all the way around its edging and even the flap that hangs over. One of the things you really are not going to want to scrimp on is good masking tape, painter's tape like the blue style, but also buy a lot of it because you're going to need a lot of it. One of the things you're going to want to be really careful about is to make sure that anything close to what you're going to be spraying is masked out. Now if you're rolling the paint on, it's not as big of an issue, but if you're using a sprayer of any kind, you want to be very careful about overspray. 
Okay, we're going to try out this uh, Wagner spray gun. I'm not sure which model it is. I'll put that down in the description below. But it looks like it should do the trick, and we're going to be shooting enamel. My brother purchased Valspar anti-rust armor, and they actually mixed this to the color that he needed. So we're going to try this with our first uh, first color. I'm thinking that probably the easiest thing is to try it unthinned first and just see how well it sprays because the less we thin it, the better coverage we're going to get. Just go for it. Yeah, good one, good one. Mm, that's good. Now this is going to be our first time using this Wagner spray gun, so I'm going to do a full review on this and I'll put a link up here in the top if you want to check that out. Now it's always a good idea to test spray what you're working on and using like an old piece of cardboard to get to know the gun and its setting. Once we had that down, I decided to start spraying the front because that was the least area that would be seen and gives me a chance to make a few mistakes, but we lucked out. The main thing I noticed with this gun is that it's really quite heavy. It's like holding a gallon of milk out in front of you. I think the main thing we we need to do when we are spraying this now is what's called keep a wet edge. Like on the front, I kind of messed up because I thought I could get it all the way to the thing. You really don't want to come back and fill in between two because if it's paint starting to dry, you might get a cloudy edge. So here we would go whatever the reach is and work it down to our that level. Move the ladder and pick it up again. again and just keep going. So, so you do it in layers? Yeah, up, but up you'd start there, up yeah. here and you do your reach down as far as you can go, then take, get off the ladder, finish going down, and then move the ladder over and pick it up from there. Oh, just like you did in, in the front. Yeah, you're right. just doing it in sections. In sections all the way All the, the way down. And so here we go. Now we're spraying just down to one of the seam lines because we're going to use that as a basic guideline for separating the two different colors. This will make it a lot easier to keep your stripes straight. We're also following the lines of the metal. This helps you to blend it in better versus going up and down. You stand a higher chance of leaving streak marks. So far, the paint's going on fine. It is a little thick, but I'd rather do that because I think we're gonna get a much better coverage this way. Okay, we got the first color down on this. We've had the bulk of the day working on this. We're going to let it um, set up overnight and then attack the next color down below. Joe, what do you think? I think it looks great. Good, I'm excited. you're the one doing all the work. I, I'm excited to see what it's going to look like with the uh, darker shade on it. I think the funnest part for me is going to be taking all the tape back off. It's like opening a present <laughs> to see how it looks. So. So we'll see how this goes tomorrow, and uh, we'll let it set up. It looks like it's leveling out, and it's doing really good, and I like the finish to it. It's just the right amount of gloss. I, th I think you made a really good choice on your paints on it, so I'm excited to do the next color. The next thing we're going to want to do with this, now that the paint has dried, we're going to want to do a tape test to make sure that it's dried enough and secured enough that it can hold up having tape put on it. So if you're testing it, find an area that has the paint on it but is in a safe area. Now we're going to be painting right to this edge, so I can come around to this side and use this as an area to test that paint. So I'm going to slap that tape on there and really rub it down. Once you put that on, this gives me a chance to, you know, give it what I call the tape test. That's good. That's exactly what we want to see. The paint is not pulling up. And I feel confident that we can go in and mask this out now. So we've got a three foot roll of craft paper and we're gonna just take it and roughly slice it right down the center to use to mask the top and bottom of this. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna start masking this out and you're gonna to wanna to run your tape the full length of anywhere that that paint could get underneath. You do not want bleeds. 
So you're going to want to take this and put the paper low enough to set some tape, but also low enough that you'll be able to run a whole strip of this tape all the way across. Working around some parts of this, like doors and hatches, you need to take a little time, but it's well worth doing it without being sloppy. Time to bring out the knee pads. This can make a big difference. That's cool. Jill. And I love that nowadays they all have Velcro, and this can really save your knees. Yeah. Well, like I said, especially if you're stepping on stones. That's a nice color. That's not as dark as the dark green, but I think that's going to be perfect to this. Now, I would highly recommend wearing a mask whenever you're spraying any kind of paints. But the great thing is this paint, being the darker green, is going to cover much easier and for the most part we're able to do it on one level except for where we're painting the door and boy the paint went on that door beautifully. This part was so much easier and and actually now we're getting into using the gun and that really quite enjoying using it. had said before, I love taking the masking off. It's like opening a Christmas present. Because this is where you get to see how well all your labor has turned out and if your lines and everything look right. Now you're going to want to take your time taking all the masking off and you should let the paint dry thoroughly but I was too excited so I just dove right into it. After everything's been removed, I came back with some flat black enamel and painted all the window trims. This gives it a more modern look. We sprayed the door green. I like the way this cuts in and goes up against the sides here. This gives a nice offset to it, and I think that has a good feel. And this laid onto this pebbly finish really, really well. We may paint this trim black. That's up to Joe. So really, the paint's all in all really pretty smooth. I mean, I'm really happy with it. If you get close to it, you can see there is a slight orange peel to it, but it really just gives it to the texture of, of the metal with the, uh, the bends in it anyway. Okay, so we're wrapping this project up. Thanks to Joe, who did 95% of all the work. I just kind of got to be here and go point 95% of nothing. Anyway, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. But pure trailer, what do you think? It's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Well, he did an outstanding job. Outstanding. Outstanding in a field. The sprayer worked out well. I wouldn't want to use it on a car or anything, but I mean, it, it really did the trick and gave us the consistency that we needed. It's got a slight orange peel texture to it, but it looks good yeah. on this. Yeah, it looks really good. So. We used oil base enamel paint, so it's going to hold well. It causes a little more work on your cleanup, but it's well worth the difference. Yep. And uh, it just, the overspray with it was very low. Very minimal. So we we're really happy with that. So I hope you like this video. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comment section down below. And if you want to look at some of the other videos, check these out. In the meantime, I'll see you soon.